Hi ladies! Hi! I am so happy to have <laughs> friends here again. So the last two vlogs I've um, been all by myself. Oh, all by nice. myself. So are you guys ready for Thanksgiving, first of all? It's Thanksgiving's coming up. Sure! And are you having anyone over? I am! Who? Some of my bestest friends in the whole <laughs> wide world. <laughs> that better be a good turkey or you're fired. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna make you bring dessert. <laughs> okay, I'll bring dessert, you got it. Awesome. I'm gonna make some cranberry sauce and it's gonna be in the shape of a can. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make the cranberry sauce then. Okay, very good. All right guys, so um, we do have a great question of the week that came in from Heather that I'd like to get to first and Brooke's gonna help us with that. So Heather Lonan, I apologize if I pronounced that incorrectly, from British, British Columbia, mm. says, I'm new. Can you give me any good stretches to ease the back side? <laughs> I am feeling this first week in the saddle. And then in parent, she said, but that's a good thing. So I get it. So we will cover some stretches, but Heather, I want to let you know that it, it is a little uncomfortable and you do feel a little bit violated the first week by that seat. Yes. <laughs> but that seat's mean. It is. Very. <laughs> no, and, and some are harder on you than others, but uh, you'll, you'll see and you probably already see that after um, you know three or four spin workouts, that feeling goes away. Mm -hmm. to just, I'm not going to get into it too much, but your body's not used to that amount of pressure there. Okay, and so when it gets used to that, and you're, you're going to be fine. But let me give you some um, good stretches specifically for the glutes, okay, so the muscles. So one of the best poses, is, or one of the best stretches is actually pigeon pose. So I'm going to have Brooke demonstrate. So Eric uh, and Brooke, if you guys could get together. And um, Brooke, go ahead and talk as you stretch. Okay, so usually we come down for pigeon pose into plank position. That's how I usually like to start it. And if I'm going to stretch my right side, I'm going to bring in my right foot, hands come out. You want to flex that foot because it protects your, protects your knee. And you just want a deep breath and slowly, slowly take it all the way down, feeling that all the way, especially in the glute area, outer thigh, hips. And I would hold it there for about 30 seconds, then come back up, switch it out. Sometimes I'll take it to downward dog, hold it there for about 15 and then sw uh, swing forward, other side, flexing of the foot again, and then slowly lowering it down. And the goal, if you can get your butt all the way to the ground, that's even better. So I'm not even perfect at that, so. Uh, it's hard for me too. Yeah. One of the things that you'll notice though is she keeps her hips square to the ground. A common mistake that you'll see people make is they'll open that hip mm -hmm. up and sit this direction. Make sure you keep those hips square to the ground. And if you want a good back stretch, you can bring the body up tall as well. Yes. It is a little bit more challenging though. So that's a great one. Another thing you can do is play with your leg position of the back leg. If you take it out, to the side, you'll feel the stretch open up the hip a little bit more. Do you feel that, Brooke? Yes, I And do. then if you bring it out the other direction towards the midline of the body more, it will hit the glute on this side a little bit more. So those are things you can do to kind of play with that stretch. <laughs> Pigeon pose, okay? Yes. So that's a great one for the glutes and also opens up the hip flexors, which is the number one joint we use on the bikes. This actually shouldn't be the knees. Okay, thank you, Brooke. Okay, good, good. job, go All right. <laughs> as, uh, as we go into the holidays, I thought a good trainer tip or more trainer topic would be alcohol. Mm. <laughs> yeah, the consumption of alcohol. It's yes. obviously um, the, the highest alcohol consumption time of the year is the holidays. And so I wanted to, and I'm not going to get into all the drawbacks of drinking alcohol, and I'm not going to say that I don't participate in those festivities. But I will tell you a couple of things that happen when you drink alcohol. You gain weight. How about that? <laughs> um, Seven uh, calories per gram is what you're looking at mm -hmm. for, for alcohol consumption, so it doesn't take much to, uh, to, to add some weight by drinking. Uh, another thing, think about it, you guys. What happens when you drink as far as your appetite? It increases it, doesn't it? It, it increases your appetite. It mm -hmm. absolutely does. It, it does. And so does some other recreational activities that have become legal in the state of Washington now. <laughs> Side note. And Colorado. <laughs> Did you guys know that? Has uh -huh. to do with some little green stuff that looks like anyone oregano. in Washington, as of December fifth, can partake in marijuana. That's crazy. Smoking. Yes. Yeah. That's scary. And Colorado. Those are yes. the two states that have passed that. You, you're allowed to um, possess one ounce. Mm. Is is what I understand. Yes. Wow. Anyways, that will also increase your appetite, <laughs> from what I understand. Anyways, um, so there's, there's obvious, I'm not going to get into everything like I said, but another thing that's really important and that a lot of people don't know when you consume alcohol is that it grinds your metabolism to a halt because your body isn't breaking down glucose anymore. So those carbs, yeah, they're sticking with you. So bread and wine, love it. Yep. <laughs> 
Shoot. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> Your metabolism is going to come to a halt the more um, alcohol that you drink. Okay, so what you, one thing that you can do to help with that is drink water. Alcohol does dehydrate you. I mean, mm. think about it. Like when you go swimming, you pour alcohol in your ears to try and dry up the water. You drink alcohol, it's going to dry out your body. So please, that's your trainer tip. If you're drinking, uh, please drink water. I have a glass of water between each um, drink I have, even if I'm spacing it out, you know, mm -hmm. two, three drinks in a four hour period, I will, at a minimum, have an entire glass of water, 16 ounces, before I move on to my next glass of wine. So keep that in mind, okay? Smart. Very. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Wow, thanks so much. As far as the most diet-friendly beverages that you can consume, mm. um, there's different there's different thoughts here, but I can just give you some statistics. Um, wine is going to probably have the least amount of calories per ounce at 20 calories per ounce. Okay, so that means you can have a five-ounce glass of wine. Typically, that's going to be about 100 calories. And the good thing about wine is most people, not all, sip wine. So you're going to have that glass in your hand longer, right? Yes. If you have a, you don't know, <laughs> Bethany. <laughs> totally not in this one. Okay. So Brooke. Sorry. So Brooke. Brooke. Uh, 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 let's see. Hard alcohol. Uh, now wine. we're talking. Okay. All right. <laughs> Hard alcohol. So we're talking about your vodka, all right, I got this. your rum. <laughs> I got this one. That's going to be about 150 calories a shot. So that's just for Ow. the alcohol. Mm. Most people are going to add something to their alcohol, commonly juice, you know, juice. Oh, sugar. High in sugar. So now you've got the sugar that the body's not breaking down because mm -hmm. you've got the alcohol. So one of the worst things that you can do, do is um, drink your vodka cranberry, okay? Um, the wor isn't the worst <clears throat> a margarita because it's got so much junk in it? Uh, there's a lot of sugar in a regular margarita. Oh, and that's my favorite. Yeah, absolutely. So what if it's blended? Does that help to break it down? No. <laughs> no. I don't know. Just, I, I guess no. I'm reaching there. Anyways, on that one. So yeah, that's going to, and the other thing about those, um, you know, rum and diets, for example, or rum and coke, they go down really fast, don't they? Yes, they, oh yeah. So they go down really fast. So you're moving on to your next rum, <laughs> rum and diet, you know, within five minutes, whereas a glass of wine might last you a half hour. Mm -hmm. Beer. It can range, um, you know, if you're drinking a light beer, it might be 100 calories. Um, if you're drinking a heavier beer, like an ale or something like that, it goes up to about 250 even. Um, uh, one of the lowest mm -hmm. calorie beers, girls? Oh, I don't know. Is this, is this is a shocker. Something light. Guinness. Mm, really? Guinness oh, Stout wow. is only about 100 calories. Did you know that, Eric? No. Nope. Guinness. So mm -hmm. if you yeah, like those darker beers and beer. you want a heavier beer and you're looking to... Um, it not gain weight, maybe try Guinness. Hmm. The mm -hmm. other thing that's good about a beer is that's the same thing like wine. It, well, at least for a lot of people, it's going to stay in your hand it's longer. It's a sipper. Yeah, it's a sip. Well, it depends on the person, mm -hmm. I guess. But beer is filling too, right? Mm -hmm. Beer is more filling. Whereas wine makes you hungry. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you have to, it, it's not one of those things that there's one variable involved. You have mm -hmm. to look at, you know, the different effects of, of alcohol, but mm -hmm. know that it's either way, it's going to slow down your metabolism. <laughs> so maybe... Oh God, that's brutal because I love me some so red wine. So the moral of the story is be careful because we're going to start consuming more high calorie food with the holidays. And Uninhibited. The drinking, and so... What about eggnog? Balance that out. <laughs> um, I'm not going to talk to you about eggnog. <laughs> but they do make fat free now. Drink fat. Just drink fat. <laughs> can you add the eggnog? Can I have a glass wrong, of fat, right? I would just have some Crisco melted down. Yes. Please. <laughs> mm, yummy. And some whipped cream. All right, you guys. Very good. Mm. So anyways, you guys careful on the alcohol. That's some things to think about. Maybe, you know, as far as which to choose and um, drinking water in between and, and understanding that it does slow down your metabolism. All right, now let's talk about the releases that are coming out, the Studio Sweat On Demand releases that are coming out this week. Today, uh, uh, Spin Skull Class with uh, Rebecca is coming out. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Yay. And uh, that's downloadable. So those of you that are looking for another download, you can download Rebecca's uh, Spin Skull Class. This is her first downloadable class, so she's very excited about that. And I think we cut a, did we cut a Speed Sculpt? Yes. Area? So there's a Speed Sculpt version that was cut out of that as well. If you're looking for a quick 30-minute blast, Speed Sculpt, Spin Sculpt, cut out of that. And then midweek, we have a spin core class coming out with yours truly. And I'm looking for song requests. So if you guys have any songs that you would like to uh, have played for that spin core class that comes out on Wednesday, I need you to get those to me by Monday. That only gives you till tomorrow. So today, tomorrow, get me your classes um, by, I'm going to say, 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on Sunday, and maybe you'll see them in that spin core class that's maybe, released on Wednesday. Maybe someone should send you like an all <laughs> instrumental classical music song. That'd be funny. Watch me make it work. I and will it make it work. Is that a challenge? And it can't be a cool down song. Yes, somebody do it. 
You have to sprint to it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I'll give it a try. I'm always up that for would a be challenge. funny. Okay, great. You guys have anything else to add? No. no. All right, go get your groove on. Woo! See you later, guys.